In the previous video, we looked at the electronic configurations for various different elements on the periodic table. Now, as I explained earlier on, what we have here is a simplified periodic table, and there's a number of different simplifications. First of all, I've rounded the atomic mass for each of these atoms, and that's the number that's represented in the bottom right-hand corner for each of these elements. And the reason I did that was just to make things a little bit more straightforward when we come to determining the number of protons neutrons and electrons. Now another simplification that we have here is that I've only included the first 54 elements of the periodic table. And we know that there's 54 elements because when we refer to the top right hand corner what we have is the atomic mass of the materials and in the far bottom right hand corner we have xenon with an atomic number of 54. On a complete periodic table, there's actually 118 elements. So we have cut off quite a few of those in order to simplify this, but in order to help us to understand what's happening with the periodic table. So what we've done up to this point is we've discussed the elements in group one and two. And we've also discussed the elements on the far right hand side of our periodic table, including our noble gases in the far right hand column, our halogens, and some of our non-metallic elements. What we haven't really done up to this point is look at the electronic configurations of our transition metals. And that's what we're going to do here. So on our simplified periodic table, we have two rows of transition metals. We have the row from scandium through to zinc, and we have the row directly below. And in this video, we're going to look at the electronic configurations for the elements from scandium through to zinc. Now first of all, let's start with what we know. We know that the electronic configuration of calcium with 20 electrons is 2, 8, 8, 2. And what we've said up to this point is that our first electron shell can only hold up to 2 electrons. Our second electron shell can hold up to 8 electrons. And our third can also hold up to 8 before we begin filling our fourth shell. But that's only partially true, because when we look at these transition metals, what actually happens is that we begin backfilling this third shell here. Now the reasons behind that is to do with the stability of the atoms. In effect, the atom is more stable when we backfill the third shell than if we was to continue filling the fourth shell. And all of these atoms want to be as stable as possible. So if we look at scandium, what we actually end up with in terms of an electronic configuration is 2, 8, we backfill the third shell, 9, 2. So if we follow that theory then, the electronic configuration of titanium will be 2, 8, 10, 2. We know that those number of electrons for titanium must add up to 22. Now this method of backfilling electrons remains true for all of the transition metals with the exception of two. Vanadium sticks by this rule, so vanadium is 2, 8, 11, 2. Our first exception then is chromium. Now chromium we know has 24 electrons, and we know the first shell has two. I'll just write this in the top right hand corner. We know the second shell has eight. So we know in the third and fourth shell, we need to use another 14 electrons. But what happens in the case of chromium is 13 go into the third shell and one goes in the fourth shell. So we've continued backfilling that third shell, but one of the electrons from the fourth shell has dropped into the third shell as well. And again, this is an issue of stability. So that is the electronic configuration for chromium. Now when we go back to manganese, we actually return to the rule that we mentioned previously. So manganese has 25 electrons, 2 and 8 is 10. We have 15 left to use. We have 13 in the third shell and 2 in the fourth shell. So it returns to the rule that we spoke about previously. And that rule remains for iron, cobalt, nickel and also for zinc. Our remaining exception then is copper, and copper behaves much the same as chromium. So copper will have the electronic configuration, two, eight, that much remains the same. 
and then we have 19 electrons left to use. Well, copper behaves the same as chromium, so what happens is we backfill the third shell, but one of the electrons from the fourth shell actually drops into that third shell as well. So whilst this may seem a little bit complicated, what we have is we have a rule for the transition metals, whereby we have two electrons in the outer shell, or the fourth shell, and we backfill the third shell with each additional electron, with the exception of two elements, chromium and copper, which both actually only have one electron in the outer shell, and one of those electrons also drops into the third shell. So now that we have an understanding of electronic configurations, we can begin to look at the types of bonding that occurs in different engineering materials.